Hey guys, and welcome back to Dan's Pro Shop, where everything's made up and the instructions do not matter. Well, at least most of the time, anyhow. <laughs> hey, today we got a little bit of a different one for you. Since I'm just bringing you along for the ride here, this is just what we're getting into at the moment. Well, the wife Sporty, which you guys may have seen or may not have seen before, uh, I, there's a problem with the rear brake light switch. It's stuck on, and unfortunately, the only way to fix that is to replace it. So this is what we're getting into at the moment. We're going to go ahead and rip this thing apart, and you guys stick around if you want to see how that goes on. So there's the old girl sitting out there in the driveway. We're going to go ahead and bring it up here in the lift because uh, daddy's getting old. I don't like working on the floor anymore. So uh, we've invested in things that bring other things up to standing level. Trust me, this thing is freaking awesome. You're going to see all about how it works. Yeah, she's lopy. If you can't tell, it's uh, it's not exactly stock. Uh, old maintenance man Dan's had his fingers in the crankcase a couple times or two. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that. Well, now that we got her all locked down in the wheel chalk here, we're going to go ahead and uh, give you the what for on the lift so you guys can see how this thing works. I don't know about you guys, but every time I rev that thing up, I always feel like Tim the Tool Man from Home Improvement. You know, when he puts the ape hangers on that lawnmower? I just, uh, I just think about that every time. Let's go ahead and see how this lift works, huh? Well, first things first. You got to plug in the air compressor into this fancy foot valve setup thing that comes with the lift. And let's be honest, if you're doing this kind of crap, you have an air compressor. So this is second nature. And when you're ready to hammer down and lift her up, you simply just hammer down. How freaking awesome is that? You know, maybe I'll come down. Hmm? We could do this all day, man. There's a giant compressor outside. We'll literally just stand here for an hour, up and down. Hmm? And the cool thing is, because, you know, safety, we're not relying just on this air cylinder to hold this whole thing up. There's a lock underneath. So, you put the lock down. It's a mechanical steel bar here that engages with teeth on the rack. Put it down. Now it's lock locked. The air cylinder isn't doing anything anymore. It's actually locked together. And in order to get it off of that lock, you take it back up so you fill the air cylinder again. Take it up, lift the lock, and then it, it stays up there. It's got a detent. Right back down to the ground and out on the road. But right now, we got to do some fixing. So we'll go ahead. Put her in the lock position. And she is good to go. So now that we got the old sporty up on the lift here, up at uh, an accessible level, because that bending down stuff is for the birds. Trust me, you do enough of this, you will invest in one of these snazzy get-ups here. So uh, you can do it standing up. Or the cool part is you get a rule rolly stool, you come up, Look at that. The clutch is right at eye level. So you can sit on a bucket or a stool or something. It's right here. And then you got all this room to put all your crap, you know, like uh, a whole six pack of pop, you know. <laughs> so the reason we're up on the lift here today, like I told you before, is the rear brake switch went out. So there's actually an MIL on the dashboard, malfunction indicator lamp, that let me know that the rear brake light is sticking on because that switch is bad. 
Here, I'll show you the condition just so you can see what's up. As soon as you turn the key on, the rear brakes are on all of the time, regardless of what I do with the pedal or the brake up front, it's just, it's always on. The culprit here, underneath the rear master cylinder, holy cow, I, can barely, I can't even get the phone in here. Underneath this brake fitting here, where these wires are, there is a pressure switch on the back of this rear master cylinder. These things are prone to failure, and usually when they fail, they fail on. So, your tail lights are on bright all the time, and nobody knows when you're braking. This is a recipe for disaster. So, especially since this is my wife's bike, we're going to go ahead and fix it. And I tell you what, it's that time of year too. We're coming up in spring and riding season. We might as well just give this thing a once through and do a regular old spring tune-up. You know, oil change. We might do brake fluid and adjust the clutch, all that. I don't know. Maybe, if we got time. Well, at least now we're on over here at the bike. And let me tell you in something. This is an absolute mother to get to. It's just... I see no reason for this thing to be as buried as it is. Excuse my fat head here, guys, but I think you're going to be seeing a lot of it here. So what I'm doing right now, there is a piece of heat shrink that covers the line that goes to that brake light switch. So, first thing, you gotta MacGyver your way into here to get to that. I tell you, this would probably be significantly easier if I took the exhaust pipes off, but I am really trying to avoid that. Not to mention the drive belt is right where your hands need to go and eventually where a wrench is going to need to go. All right, step one, get that finagled off there. I got one of the wires disconnected off that brake switch. I'm gonna go ahead and check for function here. Yeah, check that out. Now I'm hitting the front brake lever. So that's definitely what the problem was. Let's go ahead and continue on with this. Boy, howdy, they do not make this user friendly. Ugh. All right, finally, we got the wiring off. I'll tell you what, we were cussing taking it off. Just wait till it goes to put it back on. <laughs> uh, don't worry, we'll put some grease on there and slap her in. All right. Go ahead, tear open the new one here so we can see what size this thing is, and we don't have to guess. So there's a new switch, and uh, let's go ahead and tear the old one out. Hey guys, here's a pro tip. If you're doing something where you need to open the brake system, obviously I know we're probably gonna have to bleed this. However, you can get lucky. And if you put a little bit of tension onto your brakes, so depress the brake just a wee little bit, do something to hold it down. See here, I'm just gonna on the back of the lift there. So that way it holds pressure onto the brake system. Yes, we're gonna lose some oil, but hopefully we can just replace that oil and it won't suck any air in while we have this thing apart. So fingers crossed, I mean, we're probably gonna have to bleed it, but hopefully I've gotten away with this before. I'm gonna go ahead and prep the new switch 
before I even take the old one out. So I'm just ready for it to go. This is not Teflon tape. This is thread sealing tape specifically for oil based stuff. You can see here, it says like it's for gasoline, petroleum oils, propane, diesel fuel, all that. So make sure that you do not use regular Teflon tape because it'll turn into this goopy mess. And it, trust me, regular Teflon does not work with oil based stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap this one up and have it ready to go so I can slam it in quickly whenever we take the old one out. So make sure you got yourself a drain pan under here because like I said, we're gonna lose some. But we're gonna try to mitigate what we lose and do this quickly. So guys, there is a line that is attached to this switch. We're gonna have to hold that with a 16 mil and then try to undo the switch with the 17 crow's foot because there is no way we're getting everything in here at one time. All right, we got it cracked loose. That's hopefully the hard part. I gotta tell you guys, I'm not used to working out in the shop without the radio on. This YouTube copyright thing really sucks. So I get to enjoy the sound of me talking to you the whole time I'm doing a project. <laughs> All right, we got it loose enough that I think I might be able to do it by hand. If I can get my sausages in there. Oh, there we go, she's coming loose. Like I said, expect some fluid. Cool, we got it out. So let's try, 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 try to slam the new one in without losing anything, or at least a lot anyhow. Man, I tell you, you gotta have like 10 fingers and three elbows to get to this. Like I said earlier, it'd probably be easier if I took the pipes off, but I really don't feel like adding an hour onto this project. If you can just turn yourself into a contortionist, you can probably get this. Talk about flying blind. This is the mechanics version of Braille. Can't see what you're doing. You gotta go by your fingertips. Awesome, we got it started. Another pro tip, guys. Brake fluid is insanely acidic. It will destroy anything it touches. Paint, especially. So you really, really, really need to watch what you're doing here. If you have brake fluid on your hands, do not, under any circumstances, touch the paint because it will come right off in your fingers. Man, this drive belt being in the way is a royal pain. I'm sorry you're staring at the back of my head for most of this, but I'm telling you, man, I can't even see this, let alone if I had you guys in here. All right, guys, nothing we're gonna have to pay attention to you see the blades here on the end of this switch where the wiring goes on? We need to pay attention to the orientation of that. Whenever this thing is screwed in, I need these blades to be vertical like that so I can plug the harness back into it. So as you're tightening this, keep it in mind that you're going to have to plug those wires back in. So make sure that it's in a spot that you can get it.
All right, guys. I'm pretty satisfied with that. I'll see if I can shove this thing under there so you guys can actually see what I'm looking at. That guy right there. And then you see this little line here off to the side. No, this one. This just goes up to the back of the master cylinder. So this banjo bolt right here, this one, it splits off to the brake line that goes back to the rear caliper. And then this one that goes to the brake switch. So right here is where we need to put that harness on. You can tell how much the drive belt is in the way. At least it moves, but it just makes everything incredibly awkward. Cool. Now that we got that, let's go ahead and undo our rear brake. And uh, I'll just play with it a little bit. Yeah, it's pretty squishy. I think we lost just enough fluid or there's just enough air in here that we're going to have to go ahead and bleed it. Oh, well, I kind of knew that was going to happen, but this is worth a try because if it works, hey, man, it'll save you a heap of time. But let's go ahead and uh, throw the wiring in here. I just wanted to do this to make sure that it wasn't leaking. So uh, let's throw the wiring on. Keep going. So, guys, the uh, age-old battle dielectric grease to use or not to especially for this one this little spade connector is quite literally the lowest thing on this bike so I just take enough just to fill the end of that connector then shove it on the end of the switch and do that same thing with both of them just enough to fill it go ahead and see if we can't get these things on here Back to that original scenario in reverse here. Got to have 16 fingers. I find that if you stick your tongue out, it really helps. Cool, we're plugged in. The only thing left to do is reinstall some of that heat shrink tubing that like we cut off. I mean, I suppose you could be good enough with leaving it the way it is there, but uh, why not? We have this stuff, so let's go check the bin. Cool, we got ourselves a new heat shrink tubing, and seeing as how I'm not really excited about the prospect of burning the old lady's bike down, we're going to use a heat gun instead of a torch like I normally would. But yeah, simply just throw this over the end where the wires go on and uh, shrink the whole thing down just to keep uh, the road grime and crap off of it a little bit and help protect this thing since it's such a valuable situation down there. All right, time to heat this puppy up. See if we can't stab this a little bit from the top here too. I'll tell you, this is absolutely freaking miserable to get to. All right. I think I'm happy with that. Man, I gotta tell you guys, I really am not crazy with how close this is to the drive belt, but uh, Unfortunately, that's the hand we're dealt. So the best thing we can do is manage our wires, use that heat shrink in conjunction to hopefully save this thing from going out again. So what's left? Function test. Contact. All right, so there you see we got regular tail light, rear brake. Ah, <laughs> oh, look at that. Front brake. The old lady's cruising in style now, nice and safe, DOT regulated. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, bleed the brake system since we're here and not forget about it. So now that we have the old brake switch taken out of here, in case you guys didn't know, this is supposed to be a normally open switch. That means it's normally not on and it takes the pressure from the brake fluid to turn it on. So let's go ahead, I mean, I know this is bad, but let's use the meter just to confirm. This is supposed to be normally open. 
but whenever we go ahead and hook it up to an ohm meter check this out right now it's on all of the time the meter is telling me that there is zero ohms of resistance from one side to the other and the tone just confirms it so that lets me know definitively for sure without a doubt any shred of doubt at all this is definitely bad so our fix 100 percent did the job Alrighty guys, so when it comes to bleeding your brakes, this is extremely similar to doing it on a car. It's just uh, bike related. So since we're doing the back, remove the cap from the master cylinder just like you would do under the hood of a car. And we're going to want to top this thing off. Now, keep in mind, bikes like specific brake fluid. See this one here, it says use only dot four just so happens we got some dot four because brake fluid has ratings and you better be using the right stuff like i said brake fluid extremely corrosive do not let this stuff touch your pipes tell you what for uh safety sake here let's throw a rag over these things so we're just we know we're in the clear Cool, now that we have our painted parts protected, take your new brake fluid. Like I'm saying, this stuff is hygroscopic, I believe, the word we're looking for. Brake fluid loves to attract moisture, like just the moisture in the air. So this thing sitting on your shelf open will eventually contain water, and water is the enemy of a braking system. You get water in there, number one, it corrodes the inside of your braking system. Nobody wants that. These are steel lines. The caliper is steel. The piston inside the caliper is steel. It will start to rust from the inside out. Not good. And the other big thing is that this stuff is designed to have a high boiling point. Water does not. We know that. It's 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So you're cruising down the highway, dragging your rear brake or whatever. Your brakes get hot. The caliper gets hot that transfers through the caliper into your fluid this stuff gets hot and you can actually boil your brake fluid you can do that with regular brake fluid let alone if there's water in it and this just turns into a big thing it'll steam up and it'll actually lock your brakes no matter if you have them on or not just because of the pressure of that water boiling inside of your system will lock your brakes on so having clean and good brake fluid is an important thing Take your new one and open it up. And let's be real here, guys. This stuff is cheap. Why not? Just whenever you're doing something brake related, go get some new fluid. All right. So we're just going to top that thing off and head over to the other side where the caliper is. Cool, now that we're over here where the action happens, you may see I have this snazzy little uh, device here, Mighty Vac. This is so I can pull a vacuum on the braking system and actually draw the fluid and the air that comes with it out to the highest point of the system through the bleeder here on the caliper. Don't worry, I'll bring you in so you can see it. But these things are absolutely invaluable because if you guys are familiar with bleeding brakes, you would have to get someone into the car, press in the pedal, hold it. You, gotta, you rely on the pressure of the master cylinder to get the air out. This thing, it just sucks it out. So this is really easy to do one person in a situation like this. All right, so you guys see the brake bleeder here on the top of the caliper. Eight mil, go ahead and put the box end right on the end of that bleeder something that you can get to easily and spin it and then we'll go ahead and take our mighty vac with the uh, applicable attachment here and just shove it over the end of the bleeder that fits on there really good nice and snug get the hose out of the way so we're not tripping on it and now you turn this thing on it pulls a vacuum on everything and it's got a nice reservoir here so it'll just suck the fluid into this but the cool thing is, because we have extra line, 
we can go over on the other side of the bike and monitor the level of the master cylinder as we're doing this so we know for sure that thing doesn't go empty and we introduce even more air into the system. So, first thing we're gonna wanna do is pull a little bit of vacuum on this. Turn it on about halfway or so, nothing crazy. And come over here and crack our bleeder. You see it coming out here? Look at that. You see all the bubbles and gnarly stuff and everything? We need to do this until we have that continuous flow of brake fluid coming out. Go ahead and lock it down so we can top off our master cylinder. All right, we're full up again. Vacuum on. And fluid. Look at all that air. I'm watching the master cylinder and shut it. Top it back off. And the beauty is the size of this reservoir, we can do this as much as we want. I got a whole jug of fluid. We can do this all day until I'm happy with the result. Cool guys, so I did that, I don't know, three, four times. Once you're satisfied with everything, go ahead, make sure that the bleeder is tight on the caliper. Put your little dust cap back on there. And we'll come over here on this side and top off the master cylinder one last time. Make sure that everything's full. And we'll cycle the pedal a couple times, make sure we don't have any bubbles. Everything seems to be super happy. So let's go ahead clean up this diaphragm gasket for the lid and reinstall everything. Now we got the diaphragm nice and clean. Go ahead, we'll clean up the mating surface here on the top of the master cylinder reservoir. Man, I tell you what, I have watched YouTube for I don't know how long and I never fully appreciated the effort and the time and everything that goes into this. Like this stupid simple project here, this would probably take me, I don't know, maybe half an hour, if that, if I'm just doing this. But to do this, to move the camera around to try to get you guys better angles, commentate during the whole time, you know, stupid stuff like the battery on your microphone dies, just dumb crap. That's it. Give your favorite YouTuber a little appreciation. You know, next time you're watching Adam Savage or Vice Grip Garage or something, throw a comment down be like, hey, Thanks for taking the time, man. We really appreciate it. So, back to your regu regularly scheduled program. We'll go ahead, throw that gasket in there real nice. Make sure everybody's happy. Same thing, we'll clean up the inside of the lid. Throw that back on there. Make sure everyone's happy. That's right. All this stuff only fits one way. Go ahead and put our screws back down. I'm sure that there is a torque spec for this because Harley supplies a torque spec for absolutely everything. But uh, come on, this is a 1024 machine screw with a Phillips head. So uh, go until it feels right. Don't crush it because of that gasket underneath. You can actually damage it if you go too far. But you want it to be tight enough to seal everything and not let foreign contaminants and everything in. So go until it feels right. And uh, yeah, we're good. Let's go ahead and jack the rear end of this bike up. We'll go ahead and start it because we need to warm it up for an oil change anywhere. And then just put it in first gear and see what we got. So let's go ahead and take the old scissor jack here. Crank up the caboose.
just to get the rear tire off the ground. Cool, that's what we're looking for. Well, this thing kind of rattles like a freight train when it's running, so you're going to have to excuse that noise. But, uh, got her in neutral. Go ahead and spark this old girl up. I don't know about you guys, but I call that a huge success. Well, the important part about finishing any project is uh, treating yourself whenever you finish it. Hmm. Ice cold iron. The best. Well, guys. Ugh. I just took a look at the timer on the video there, and uh, this is kind of turning into a thing. So we're not going to do the oil change, and like there's some other stuff, like there's a line back here that needs replaced. We're going to do that in a separate one, so this doesn't turn into like the Lord of the Rings trilogy. But uh, yeah, hopefully somebody gets something out of this. I know I'm sorry about the camera angles, but you guys saw the confinement down there, and it's just. It was miserable enough to get my fat head under there, let alone bring you guys along. So hopefully you saw enough to see what was going on and that if you have this particular issue, you can do it on your own. So uh, hopefully you guys got something out of this and we will see you next time.